The March reading vlog was so fun to do despite all the crazy things happening. My husband left for an extended boys weekend, so I juggled kiddo and our new puppy Gizmo. Our heater stopped working and it was freezing, but we did enjoy a trip to the bookstore, Korean food, and some awesome books, starting with Lord of the Fading Lands. over the moon because I was looking for original covers of Lord of the Fading Lands by C.L. Wilson. I recently did a dedicated book review. I tried to keep it non-spoilery, but I had commented how it was kind of a bummer because the original covers are such a gem. I feel like those are gonna be little treasure finds. So today I had ordered a used copy for $6 off Thrift Books, and this is what came in the mail today. And it is in very good condition, like the pages are stiff, white, no stains, no cracks or bends. This is an original advanced reader copy of Lord of the Fading Lands before October of 2007. This is the year that I graduated college. It's hard to believe that that was 17 years ago, but here we are. And I'm so over the moon for having this book. So now I have the new cover and the original advanced reader copy. I'm so glad to have this one because I had a hard time picturing what the Terran looked like because it's a big cat type of creature and it has wings. And then on the back it has like, some of the artwork has a little depiction of it so I can better picture it and it's just so cool. I don't wanna to speak too much about this book. Check out my review video for that. But this is a third person very luxurious, rich, high fantasy romance novel. And I think that both the adult fantasy and romanticy communities are going to absolutely love this book. I am so glad that the publisher put C.L. Wilson on my radar because I'm so excited to pick up the rest of the series. And I learned that C.L. Wilson has an ongoing series right now. The Winter King is the first book followed by The Sea King. And I think she's working on book three, which is The Jaguar King. But I think you're gonna fall in love with her writing. The story is so compelling. I blazed right through this book, couldn't put it down. The feedback I'm hearing, my friend Jesse over at Tierra's and Books, she is blazing through these books. She is farther along than I am at this point now, and she's absolutely living for them too. These are just amazing books, and it's so cool picking up this book, being able to see how far romanticy as a genre has come. I felt like I should share a segment of an old author interview from C.L. Wilson where she was talking about the book a little bit because this was her debut book, and and she talks a little bit about blazing that trail. Hair and Soul, I broke all the rules. It was the book that was a thousand pages long. <laughs> It was a fantasy novel and a romance novel. She mentioned there was a book trailer for this back then, so of course I had to go look it up. I will share like a little piece of it here, but it is so glorious. Again, I'm going to link out to her interview and that book trailer in the show notes and in the comments below so that you can go check those out for yourself, but definitely go go get her book. If you're a Kindle Unlimited reader, these books are available, the entire series, on KU, so you can pick it up and read it on your ebook too. If you read these books, please send me a message, leave me a comment, and let me know what you think because I'm so excited to get more people talking about these books because they deserve so much love. All right, I'm off my soapbox now. <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I had to interrupt this reading vlog to just share some love about this book. Okay, bye.
So I finished reading Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino. I love this book so much. It kind of reminded me of like the best parts of Colleen Hoover's writing with like the emotional impact of it and just the pacing. I talked a little about this book in my March TBR book release video, but so I don't want to go into too much. Essentially the premise of this book is that Emmeline is an adjunct writing instructor over at UC San Diego. She's in a relationship, a many years relationship with this guy named Trevor who is a former college football star but he was injured and so he's still like dealing with the physical therapy and really the mental impact of not being able to do that anymore. Emmeline is a person who lives her life very guarded and she doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about her past because of how traumatic her past was. Growing up she lived in a rundown small Ohio town. Her family was very impoverished. She had one best friend growing up named Jace and he grows up to be this really successful handsome best-selling author and she's a little resentful of that because this book that he recently published seems to follow her life their lives growing up on that street in Ohio. There were some parts of this book that were absolutely heartbreaking. The abuse, physical and emotional abuse and neglect that she went through and Jace went through made me tear up at times. I was looking for a book that was going to give me that emotional punch and this one did it for me. I think I gave it four and a half stars, but it was so good. I've never read Renee Carlino before, but this will make me pick up more of her books. There was a quote that I think summarizes what the gist of this whole novel is about and it reads, we can't always control our circumstances, who our parents are, where we live, or how much money we make, but in those rare moments when we can shape our fate, when we do have the power to make our own happiness, we can't be too scared to do it. And I thought that was such a beautiful way of looking at life because I think a lot of people live their lives very scared to fail, very scared to think about what they've been through. They're scared to be happy and to just let go and stop thinking about what other people are going to judge them by and then to just live true to themselves. And I think that's what this book was about and I loved how the book was nestled in itself and when I say that I mean in the story you have the author who is writing about their life together but in the book that he's writing about his character is also writing about a story of them. So it's like a story inside of a story inside of a story. So Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino. I don't want to get be too spoilery. There were some times during this book that I just wanted to like shake Emmeline by the shoulders and tell her to get her shit together and to make other choices already because she spends so much time in this book putting off reading the book by her best friend, her childhood best friend Jace, that I just wanted to smack her upside the head and just be like, finish the book already. Why are you putting this off? It's taking her months and months and months to read this book and that was my only annoyance with this book but anywho I'm not gonna give away spoilers so if you're interested in that one I definitely recommend Swear in This Life if you're looking for something you know more contemporary romance but I thought this story was so beautifully done on to the next book <laughs> I was reading this one earlier, That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon by Kimberly Lemming, which is the Mead Mishaps story. There are three books out at this point. And this book covers a character named Cinnamon, who she's not a coward, but she doesn't go out of her way to like sign up to be a hero and to do those quests and be chosen by the town. In fact, she like hides from it so that she's not picked. Because she's avoiding going on any kind of hero's quest, she ends up being forced to go on a hero's quest and then kind of that little craziness ensues. I love this story. Cozy fantasies are a little bit hit or miss with me. Legends and Lattes was pitched to me by a number of different people. While it was 
fine. It still had something missing for me. So it was just kind of meh. And I found Travis Baldry's writing a bit clunky. And honestly, that book was so low stakes that I was bored to tears. I thought some stuff was cute between the main characters in the shop, but like it ended up being not for me. This one is more of an outrageous rom-com style of romanticy, and the stakes in this are much higher. Cinnamon is constantly getting into danger on their journey hitting up these four different temples, which is kind of the plot of this story. So there are like big monsters and creatures and there's danger at every turn, and so that was very enthralling to me. And then of course like the relationship between her and the demon. <laughs> I don't want to complain about stupid stuff. The title of this one is That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. The book that just came out as a re-release for the new covers is called That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Human. And then book two is called That Time I Got Drunk and Yeeted a Love Potion at a Werewolf. And I'm like, my brain has a problem with the first and third books being the same structure. And so I kind of wish this one was called That Time I Got Drunk and Fell in Love with a Demon because that's what the protagonist struggles with so much in the first half of this book is fighting against falling in love with this demon. So I kind of wish it was named something different, but it's just like a very specific thing to nitpick about. That's just how my brain works, okay? This was so cute and funny and I'm so glad that I have books two and three. I love the art. Like I would hang these on my wall. I love the D&D style adventure, just the monsters they run into, the towns they come across, and all of those crazy shenanigans. Definitely pick up Mead Mishaps by Kimberly Lemming. The other book I was reading was Mr. Wrong Number by Lynn Painter. I've never read Lynn Painter. This was one of my Libby holds that was expiring that I really, really needed to read. I ate this up. It was so funny to me. I was just busting out laughing during like silent moments at home and my husband would just look at me like it was a maniac. It was so cute and funny and I love the dialogue and the banter. Like some authors it feels really really forced but this one it just felt like actual banter that you would have with your friends. The love story itself is you know it's a typical rom-com type of love story. So there are nitpicks that I have with the female main character and some of the choices that me she makes and miscommunication stuff. Like there's some of that too, but I enjoy this a lot to the point of I'm going to be picking up the rest of Lynn Painter's books because in my opinion, I enjoy this as much as I would like Emily Henry, which I adore with all of my heart. So Lynn Painter, I will be adding to my regular rotation of reading as she releases books. So it looks like she already has a number of books out there and I will be picking them up to read. Anywho, sorry if you heard my puppy chewing on his little rawhide like not rawhide, but little chew stick thing because he's teething, he's about to turn four months old and he's just like all over the place and crazy. So let's say hi, it's been a while. There he is, boom. Okay, I'm gonna continue reading now because I started um, Terran Soul 2, Lady of Light and Shadows, and I'm enjoying it a lot. I don't know if it'll make this reading vlog, but you know, I feel like it needs its own video, like a spoilery discussion video, so that I can talk about all of the things with this series as I read them. So, okay. Bye. I think I'm gonna DNF Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings for now because I'm six chapters in, I'm struggling with the seventh chapter. Maybe it's been too long since I read Magnolia Parks, but I can't keep up with anything. I'm a geriatric millennial mom and I'm old enough to be Daisy Hates mom. I think she's like 20 years old in this book. I'm just not in the right mindset for all of this toxic behavior and the terrible choices that these people keep making. And then I was confused about what timeline we were because maybe it's because I wanted to see the Magnolia Park storyline through to the end, but I'm impatient in realizing that this is in parallel to the events of Magnolia Parks. So this book isn't picking up right after the whole BJ reveal at the end of the first book. And I guess that's where I'm getting frustrated. So I'm DNFing this for now. I'm sure I'll like it. Maybe I'll pick it up in the summer. I'll add it to like my bilf list, books I'd like to finish. Is that a thing? We can make it a thing. So yeah, 
I'm super bummed out that I'm not enjoying this because I loved Magnolia Park so much and was so invested in that story. And like I said, it's probably a headspace thing. I'll get there. Speaking of headspace, I don't know if I'm in the mood to read Victoria Aveyard's Realm Breaker trilogy right now. I know I talked about in a previous video that the final book in that trilogy, Fate Breaker, came out, but I'm not in a headspace for that. I kind of just want to continue reading the Terran Soul, you know, the C.L. Wilson series, because those are so luxurious and I feel like basking in that kind of writing and taking my time and just being fully immersed in a high fantasy world with sweeping romance. Also, I'm getting tons of pressure from my friend Jessie at Tierras and Books because she is like blasting through the third book already and I am still 15% through book two. So yeah, there are two other books that I planned reading this month, but I don't think I'm gonna get to those in this reading log video. They are The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black and Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. I think I'm gonna hold off on those two for this vlog so that I can do dedicated book reviews for each of those because I am still really excited about reading those sequels. They won't be in this reading vlog, but I will read them this month. If you've read the entire Magnolia Parks universe books, did you like this one? Does it get better after the sixth chapter? Because I'm struggling remembering who people are. You've got Julian and Declan and Christian and Henry and all of these other people, the Lost Boys. Is that an ever reference way back when? I guess my problem with this book, especially with this new group of people that we're following is especially the male characters. I don't feel like any of them have a really distinct voice. And I feel like if you pick up a book and start reading it, even though the chapter is labeled, I still don't feel like that's obvious who's head or perspective you're in. And if the voices aren't distinct enough, I just get lost and bored again. It's probably a headspace issue. So I'm thinking this will be like a summer read. All right, I'm gonna get back to reading Lady of Light and Shadows. Boom, March reading done. I didn't get through all of the books that I initially planned on reading for my March TBR such as Victoria Aveyard's Realm Breaker series. And I feel like there was another one. Oh, Daisy Hates. I DNF that one for now or bilfed it, but I feel like my reads this month were strong. I enjoyed all of them for very different reasons. Like I said, Empire of the Damned and The Prisoner's Throne. I have separate video reviews for those, so be on the lookout. And then over on the Story Darlings podcast, I'll be talking about Trial of the Sun Queen with Tara here pretty soon, because that is our March book club read. And then next month is gonna be The Ever King. So super excited about all of these books to read, but it was such a great month for reading. If I had to pin it down to my favorite books this month, Lord of the Fading Lands and Lady of Light and Shadows by C.L. Wilson. I know that book is 17 years old and it does feel that way at times, but I cannot tell you how wonderful the world building was, the fey language, the romance, the angst and tension in it, the magic. I mean, it was just such a rich escape and I enjoyed every aspect of that story, especially the second book. I think I've talked about this before, but books one and two in the Terran Soul series used to be one book. In that interview where I shared a snippet from C.L. Wilson, she talks about the book being a thousand pages of a high fantasy romance. Lord of the Fading Lands and Lady of Light and Shadows were those thousand pages, but now it's split, I guess, to be more digestible. If you read Lord of the Fading Lands and you're not quite into it and you don't see what's so special about it, read the second book because I kind of wish they would have kept the books together because there are so many twists and there's such high stakes and deaths that occur and the scenes that happen are just incredible. And I have all the great things to say about this series. So I'm excited to continue my journey. <laughs> I know Jesse out there is like looking at all of these other books that I've been reading. And it's just like, why are you not reading the third book yet? I am going to be reading the third book soon. Very excited. Like I said, Taryn Soul books one and two were my favorites of the month. And then I still enjoyed many other things like Mr. Wrong Number was so cute and light and the perfect like little palette cleanser. And I thought that time I got drunk and saved a demon by Kimberly Lemming was so hilarious and that was fun as well. I think I found my little cozy niche for like cozy fantasy and it's the rom-com. So, so fun. I am going to get back to reading Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. This one isn't 
hooking me quite like the first book was and I think it's because I enjoy like dark academia so much or just like a training school and we don't get that we got that in the first book it's also been three years since I read the first book and there are so many names and vampire subtypes and cities and all of this stuff that I've just completely forgotten I've read different blog posts that try and recap everything that happened in the first book but it's not the same as just doing a reread so I am trying to troop forward and read through this book though. It still has that same funny charm. Slightly inappropriate, lots of f-bombs, but still that funny charm. That snarky wit that Jay Kristoff is so good at. We'll see, I'm about 15% through. I'm hoping to finish this up in the next few days, and then by the time you see this video, I probably already have a review out. Hope you enjoyed my March reading vlog, and I will see you soon. Bye!